Hello all. Good news. Um, I've managed to find some evidence pertaining to the experimenter psi effect, and what do you know? It turns out that um, it does exist, uh, according to the very first of the sources in here, uh, or that you know there's been some significant evidence found for it. However, what's interesting is the fact that the ones, one of the uh, one of the bits which I found most interesting about the psi effect there, um, and they also go on to explain about psi missing later down. So just you know be uh, so do not mind to read the whole essay. But what's interesting is that the last study that they refer to in the experimenter effect um, segment is that uh, the subjects did not know that they were being sent anything. The senders were not really aware that there was any ESP going on. And uh, not, so basically, neither subject knew that there was ESP involved here. And uh, probably, and since they didn't know that an ESP test was involved, they probably didn't even really know that the experimenters were skeptics or believers. Therefore, I am more likely to believe that this is an experimenter, that this is not really an experimenter psi effect, but an experimenter psychological effect based on the fact that, um, and, and this is even with really good controls to eliminate, uh, to eliminate, um, uh, uh, to eliminate um, such things as uh, uh, sensory leakage and all that sort of thing. So I mean, like all conventional artifacts have been removed, but psi effect may be hampered by skepticism, but only when the experimenter knows. Only, um, only when the experiment, um, or there may be a micropsychokinetic effect in there, but it's highly unlikely. So I suspect it's more likely that it's a psychological effect, and that my uh, previous studies, um, I may have, um, maybe there have been something in their typing which had given away to me that they were as skeptics or believers, and thus as a result influenced my psychic capability. Uh, still statistically significant, but it's much more of a psychological error than a. Um, but of course, anyway, that one had some flaws, and I want to do some updated protocols. Yada yada yada. So. Here's the thing, based on what I'm looking at so far, and based on the common, uh, on the common, um, based on all the sources I provided to the right, um, and based on what I've read, here is my initial conclusion based on so, uh, certain uh, psychic phenomena uh, and paranormal phenomena in general. Bigfoot, I consider to be highly, uh, probably highly unlikely, um, worth researching for ecological reasons, but um, highly unlikely. Um, Yeti, same thing. Um, again, cryptozoology doesn't really fall into my category. UFOs, I consider to be uh, very highly unlikely. Um, hyperspace, probably highly unlikely, that sort of thing. Um, interestingly, I do find that it is probably, uh, I, I'm going to say for definite that the two following psychic phenomena are bunk. Macro telekinesis, uh, you know, psi wheels, any sort of telekinetic demonstration uh, are either all magic tricks, self-delusion, or a physical process, as was kindly so pointed out by Mind Freak. Um, Micropsychokinesis, possible, is warranted for, by further research. In light of the fact that, according to Formulab.com, retropsychokinesis was replicated, uh, the effects were, uh, by, that were found by Schmidt were replicated by Dick J. Bierman, um, who, uh, Dick J. Bierman, who's kind of open-minded about all this, and, um, and may have been also replicated by Beloff, unknown. Interestingly, um, uh, the very first, of course, the re the study there, which talks about that, was actually written before Schmidt did his first stuff. So that was, you know, the um, Schmidt had actually improved upon techniques that were uh, done by Beloff. So just to be clear on that, if you ever read the uh, the papers of interest from Formulab.com. Anyway, that being aside, also there's another couple of things to be interested uh, interested in here. Um, telepathy, precognition, and uh, uh, telepathy and precognition. Uh, uh, you know, like the, the ESP type stuff. Probably more likely than not. Now, here's the thing, based on what I've read. Again, please read the sources here before you make your decision and before you comment. Uh, finally, as well, um, also the um, uh, also psychic staring is officially bunk. Now, um, I should also mention, uh, and the reason I say psychic staring is bunk is because of the fact that um, even though uh, they found that the uh, that Marilyn Schlitz's communication to uh, sender to subjects was not uh, uh, could not account for the significant effects in the first two studies, and therefore, uh, and considering that there was uh, uh, considering that there was no um, artifact that would have inhibited the psychic phenomena, I am I am inclined to conclude that psychic staring in and of itself is bunk. Now, let me be perfectly clear on something here. I want to be perfectly clear on something. I am not. I am still agnostic on psychic phenomena. I just simply, I'm saying, however, that I am more open-minded to the idea of precognition and telepathy, um, and maybe time reversal phenomena like quantum, like uh, micropsychokinesis. So if somebody claims to be a, uh, I do not believe in mediumship, however, I still believe that those studies have been flawed. I still do not believe in mediumship. I do not believe in psychic staring. I do not believe in macrotelekinesis. I believe that micropsychokinesis and retropsychokinesis may be possible, 
They do have, they would have mechanisms such as uh, the brain entangling itself with quantum particles, you know, quantum entanglement, because that would be on the micro level. So that might be a possible mechanism. Simultaneously, um, also, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and, uh, and observation does appear to have an effect. So that means that there is, it's worth further research. Let me make that be perfectly clear. Also, I believe that the bulk of professional psychics are still cold readers. As a magician, I'm still going to test every psychic I come across. And, if the bu and there has to be two criteria met. One, all psychics would have to meet statistically significant data under controlled conditions. And B, the, individual, you know, the, the overall cumulative effect would have to be uh, statistically significant. And the individual psychic would also have to meet statistically significant effects. Uh, I'll probably end up using something like a computer-generated Zener card test with uh, 25 cards under blind trials. They won't be able to alter the trials anywhere. I'll, make sure so I'll, make, I'll be observing it uh, to make sure. And I'll just tell them I'm a believer in advance to uh, avoid this so-called psychic effect. And as well... Um, my criticisms of the $1 million challenge still stand. One, the so-called experimenter psi effect, you know, the skepticism, it's not just negative vibrations. When subjects go to the $1 million challenge, they know they are being tested by skeptics. Therefore, here's my proposal. Randy, if you're watching this or if somebody else who works for the JREF is watching this, if you're working in experimental protocol, tell them that the experimenter who will be observing the test will be a believer. Even if they aren't, it will probably, uh, that will deal with that possible effect and that will be a very good test for it. The second one, uh, the second one, I still, uh, I, still stress this, I still can't stress this enough. Peer review. Now that we know that the experimenter effect is more of a psychological one, but it's more likely that from the, from the current arguments that psi phenomena may exist, the best way to handle this? Submit the entire $1 million challenge um, uh, database, like, you know, from, you know, all experiments from all the decades that Randy's been working on this, to scientific journals for peer review. This would create the file drawer effect, which would make any possible um, statistically significant effect on the on the pro side um, on the pro side um, statistical significance anomaly by chance that would be the best way of handling that and uh, and that would be the that's basically the one last question that we have to answer now so one so Randy get the one million dollar challenge moving until then I'm going to assume that uh, telepathy and stuff like that, uh, you know, ESP type capabilities and micropsychokinesis are more likely than not. If you do have other information, do by all means present it to me. I am still, however, something of a skeptic. I'm just op more open-minded to the idea. Let me be perfectly clear on that. That having been said, toodles all. I think I've dealt with this as to the best of my capability. And um, so, yeah, I think that we've uh, pretty well clarified that there may be something there. It may be hampered by skepticism when the subject knows that there is a, um, a problem there. And um, by the way, read everything here uh, before, before you reply back to me. And, uh, you know, don't jump in with arguments. Read all the sources I provided, both skeptical and pro, before you, uh, before you get to it. Because I've, you know, I've, made, I've made a couple of quite, I've put a couple of clear sources in there which need to be read. Once you've done that, then get back to me on this, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you, uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. And um, so, yeah, I'm more open-minded to the idea. Psychics, if you're not telekinetics, um, if you're tele telepaths, remote viewers, or, or other stuff, um, come to me. I will give you uh, c controlled, highly controlled conditions under which you can try to prove your claims. And otherwise, it's all good. Um, and so far, that also means that the experimenter psi effect challenge, where I've asked people to try to replicate, um, it's still going. The $100 still stands if you can prove it under scientific conditions that there is a psi, uh, a psi effect going on as well. Uh, you know, if there's a psi effect that's playing into it um, that you can prove, by all means do so. Uh, the, there is a slight change now. Uh, in light of the fact that there has been uh, one study which showed, uh, again, in one of these sources, in the top source, that there, uh, that, that, uh, there was significant effects when the experimenters didn't know that the, uh, that the, bullet, that the experimenters were skeptics. Um, you know, when, uh, you know, in light of that fact, you're going to have to do at least four studies now, peer-reviewed and videotaped, before you win the $100, because that, uh, you know, all being statistically significant, because, uh, you know, proving the sci experiment or side effect of the psychic phenomena, because that will be what will be necessary in order to undo this one uh, study. That having been said, toodles all, thanks a bunch, and um, for watching, and I hopefully have dealt with uh, parapsychology once and for all now, now I can finally move on to cosmocracy and other important things. So, toodles all, read the sources, and read, them and, and, and read my sources, and watch my other videos before you get back to me on this, okay? Thanks. Bye.